Hello everyone. Today I wanted to show you a piece of historic site located in East England in the town of Thetford. We'll start with the very rare weather here. Before the entrance, you can park your car and walk through the gate to the Priory area. Before us we can see the remains of this great monastery, founded in 1103 by Roger Bigot. It was one of the largest and richest religious foundations at that time. From the middle of the 18th century there was a statue of the Virgin Mary in the church. Lanzo, prior of Lewis, sent 12 monks in 1104 to serve in Thetford with Malgod. Herbert, the current Bishop of Norwich, turned the first sod into the new foundation and the prior and many nobles laid the cornerstone. In 1240, Gregory IX granted leave to the Priory of Thetford to appropriate the Church of Nathili, in Diocese of London. In 1248 he got into an argument with the Welsh monk Stefan de Charon. The monk pulled out a knife and stabbed it hard enough that he died outside the church door. In September 1279, the monastery was visited by the French prior of Montdidier and the English prior Lenta. Vincent found 13 monks there and increased their number to 22 monks. The buildings were in good condition and the church and crab was exceptionally beautiful and solidly constructed. The debt amounted to 500 marks, prior Thomas said that he would not exceed 400 marks. In 1301, the Pope instructed the Prior of the Holy Trinity in York to investigate the Prior of Thetford. Thetford Monastery wishing to withdraw from under jurisdiction. Cluny elected by the Earl of Norfolk to one of his monks, Reginald de Montargai. Reginald resisted Abbot Cluny, imprisoned some of the monks and treated badly. In 1507-1510, the bricklayer Thomas Aldrich reconstructed the gable behind the main altar with a large window. There were patrons' tombs in front of the altar. In 1540, a large part of the tombs was moved to Framingham, where we can see them even today, and the Church of St. Mary fell into ruins. Report of visitors from Cluny in 1262 It states that through Henry, the sub-prior of Thetford, and Thomas, the Chamberlain, they inquired in London about the condition of their home and concluded that all divine offices and spiritual duties were proper carried out. The prior was not allowed to come in person because he was disturbed by his physical disabilities. The house was indebted to 610 marks, having previously filed a full statement of accounts. The number of brothers was 22. Visitors to Cluniac from 1275 to 126 were in Thetford on the third Wednesday of Lent. They found 24 brothers living with sufficient regularity. With the exception of Ralph the Warden who was found guilty of urinary incontinence. The guests threw him out and sent him to penance to a distant monastery. They also removed another brother for hurting a college servant. The house had 804 marks, and under the seal of the chapter 400 marks to the patron of the monastery, Count Marcia. Water supply, which the monastery needed for agricultural and industrial purposes, as well as for domestic use, including sanitation, came mainly from the river. Several features of water management that have survived or have been recorded in the meadows north of the river and within the monastery are believed to be of monastic origin. A map published in 1807 shows the canal west of the former water lane line running north towards the conventual buildings, and that element that was filled but that survives as a buried element likely provided water to the infirmary and flushed the drain after the re -redorter. Further to the west, another canal remains open, running north from the river towards the kitchen in the southwestern part of the Claustralus complex and turning west along the southern edge of the gardens associated with the prior's quarters. To the west of the gardens, a slight meander in its course marks the place of a large pond, which could originally be associated with a mill. The pond is now full. A number of functions are excluded from planning, these are Abbey Farm Cottage and adjoining barn, Abbey House and associated garages, a greenhouse, all areas of driveways and garden paths, areas of yards and parking lots, paving stones, inspection chambers, garden walls, other than those of medieval origin, fences, gates.
we move on to the next historic site, Warren Lodge Thetford. Thetford Warren Lodge dates back to the 15th century. It is a turreted house, possibly used as a hunting lodge. The bricks inside the structure are medieval. The roof was burnt down in 1935 and then restored by the Ministry of Works in 1949. A small stone house from the 15th century with defensive features. With the main room on the first floor. Possibly intended for the gamekeeper prior of Thetford who had the right to free war. Whittingham considers Thetford Warren Lodge to be built around 1530 by Sir Richard Fulmerston. A large square building with something like a dome-like mosque. A remnant of an old stone staircase. Drawn by T. Martin in 1740 when it had a thatched roof and an octagonal watchtower at the corner. R. R. Clark's photograph circa 1900 duplicated at Old Lazo House and incorrectly labeled. It shows a building prior to the 1935 fire. Showing that it had wings attached to form terraces of thatched huts from the 18th. 19th century. The name of Lazo House is mentioned as an incorrect local building name. I.N. 1994 in March. Warren's cottage is now fenced off from the surrounding scrub forest. The building is made of flint, some of which are covered with a layer of crushed stone, with stone corners and prominent holes. The interior was not available during the tour. The planned area was expanded in 1996. The lodge is a rectangular building with two floors, approximately 8.5 meters by 5.8 meters, with a chimney approximately 1.6 meters wide and two stages protruding from the west wall. Most of which stand almost to their original height and are up to one meter thick at the ground floor level. Are made of limestone debris with an admixture of brick and tiles, and with limestone cladding which contain many reused architectural fragments from the 12th century. The floor of the upper story has not survived. Although its level is marked with an offset on the inner surface of the walls, the flat roof with skylight is modern. On the eastern side of the building, on the south side, there is a door opening with a pointed arched vault and a brick vault leading to the ground floor. Removed the inner and outer stone entrances. Except for the jam base on the north side, it is believed that the tiled slots in the wall thickness on either side of the opening are intended for drawbars to secure the entry. The lower apartment has a worn brick floor. On the west wall are the remains of a large fireplace, and to the south of the entrance, in the southwest interior corner of the building, there is an oblique narrow door with a pointed arch and stone jams opening onto a balustrade, spiral staircase, leading to a similar door on the first floor. Originally, the stairs were topped with an octagonal turret protruding above the roof level of the building. It didn't survive anymore, but still happened in the early 18th century as shown in a building sketch from around 1740. In the southeastern corner of the building, which is the outer wall of the stairs, you can see traces of reconstruction, probably after collapse. With a clear indication of the renovation by incorporating a random beam and brick into the fabric. The ground floor was illuminated by five narrow window slits, one in the eastern wall north of the entrance. One centrally located in each end wall and two in the west wall on both sides of the chimney. At the upper floor level, there are four wider, rectangular window openings, one in each wall. All arrow slits are internally widely spaced. Where the exterior stone window frames remain intact, the door frames are reused double slanted masonry. And where the stone has been removed, in the east upstairs window and in all but the downstairs north window, the imprints remain visible in the surrounding mortar. The most striking feature of the upper apartment is the large fireplace in the west wall which is beautifully constructed in brick with ash jams and a moldy brick base. To the south of it there is a western window opening. And to the southwestern corner, opposite the entrance to the stairs, there is a narrow, arched passage to the wardrobe in the thickness of the wall. A rebate to the door is visible in the stone frame. There is a large recessed opening in the western wall behind the dressing room. And below it, in the outer surface of the wall. 
there is a narrow opening through which you can see the round passage of the garment. In the eastern wall, above the entrance on the ground floor, there is a rectangular opening with stone jams leading into a recess in the wall thickness, with a four-leaf light outside. The rectangular slit in the floor of this recess, opening to the door arch below, is interpreted as a murder hole, through which projectiles can be dropped at anyone who tries to force the entrance. Inside the building, changes are visible, including the separation of the northern end of the ground floor into two small, additional rooms, one above the other. The partition walls have not survived. But the floor at this end, north of the fireplace, has been lowered and the inner face of the lower walls has been set back by approximately 0.45 meters, squeezing the spill of the northern window shooting range and leaving prints in the mortar from which the flints have been removed. Above and below the level of the upper chamber in the eastern and western walls there are two small, rectangular openings illuminating the intermediate floor. These changes have likely been made. Sometime after 1740, as the holes inserted are not shown in the sketch of the lodge as it was on that date. The sketch shows that there was a small outbuilding at the northern wall, and another small shed to the west. Two single-story thatched wings and connecting doors were then inserted into the south wall of the original building. These additions were demolished after a fire in 1935, but they are recorded in a photograph from around 1900. The outline of their roofs is marked by color differences on the outer faces of the northern and southern walls, and the blocked opening of the inserted door is also visible in the southern wall. The remains of slate glued into the fabric of the western wall outline the slope of the roof of another adjacent building of unknown date. The well, probably today with the original building, is about 13.8 meters west of the cottage. The round head of the well is 1.6 meters in diameter and is now covered with mortar flint. Until the abolition of monasteries in the 16th century, Thetford Warren remained in the possession of the Prior of Cluniac Priory of St. Mary and it was occupied by a gamekeeper prior. The defensive features of the building, narrow slotted windows on the ground floor, a crime hole and evidence of a tie, bars on the door, to protect against armed poachers. And there is a golf course in the vicinity of Warren Lodge. We are approaching the end of the movie. If you liked it, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and keep up to date with the next movies. Have a nice day. See you soon.